I'd like to explain to you how the fluid injection works on the 62 and 63 Oldsmobile jet fire. These engines were 10 and a quarter to one compression and they had six, five, five to six and a half pounds of boost. So they ran what was called turbo rocket fluid and injected that into the intake air to cool the intake air to prevent detonation. When the turbo would boost, it would create pressure in the intake manifold. That pressure would come through the check and relief valve in the intake manifold and it would come come up through and pressurize the fluid tank. From the tank it would come through the turbo rocket fluid filter into the fluid metering valve which is here. I've got one of the valves disassembled. The fluid would come in here and raise this float in the float chamber and lift this diaphragm against a hole, a hole in the uh, in the cap. When that hole is covered, that directs the pressure through the little hole here to the top side of this diaphragm and pushes it against this hole to seal that hole off. With that hole shut off, you have another line under at the bottom of the turbo that will supply pressure to the bottom of the power piston in the carburetor, pushing it to wide open. From there it comes around to the middle of the fluid metering valve, which is right here. That will pressurize in here, but cannot go out this hole because the diaphragm has it shut off. So there's another diaphragm on the bottom and pressure from this center port with, with the top hole shut will push this against a check ball and that allows fluid to flow out the bottom port. That bottom port, the fluid will flow then into the throttle body and into the intake of the turbo. If you run out of turbo rocket fluid and the tank goes dry, then there's no fluid in the float chamber. The vent would be under here. That would make the float drop. Then the diaphragm would allow the vent to open up in the cap. With that vent open, it relieves pressure here, which will allow the diaphragm to lift and allow that hole to be open. With that hole open, when the pressure comes through this center port, it will no longer come out the bottom and the pressure will go through this hole. And that hole is the top port, which is this port here. Then it will flow into the boost limit control valve. This boost limit control valve activates a secondary butterfly in the throttle body. My camera's not going to get very good video of it. But there's a secondary butterfly in the throttle body and one PSI of boost will close that secondary butterfly and not allow the turbo to boost more than one pound. So if you're out of turbo rocket fluid, it won't burn the engine up. <clears throat> now if you shut the engine off, your tank is still pressurized because your check valve will not allow the boost pressure to come back into the intake. So with your tank pressurized, they needed a way to relieve that pressure when you turn the engine off. So they have a depressurization valve 
that has vacuum on this side and boost pressure on this side or tank pressure from your rocket fluid tank. When you turn the engine off, it'll drop vacuum and allow this diaphragm to open, allowing all the boost pressure to be relieved into the vacuum. So all the pressure will be vented when the engine's turned off. Then uh, that's for the most part how the system works. The turbo itself works just like pretty much any other modern turbo. You've got your compressor and your turbo, turbine, and you've got a controller. It's a spring diaphragms and uh, some shims. And depending on how much the spring is shimmed in there, is uh, the, the the right amount of shims will give you five to six and a half pounds of boost. I like to get closer to six to six and a half. And if you go over the amount the spring is shimmed to, then it will open a valve in here to allow the exhaust gas to bypass the turbo. And for the most part, that's a simplified version of how the fluid injection works in the 62-63 Oldsmobile Jetfire.